Hi everybody, um, this is Melissa from Aim at Melanoma coming to you live again um, for our topic tonight, which is stage two melanoma. Um, and just to clarify before we get started, stage two melanoma patients, um, this is cutaneous disease. So melanoma that has originated on the skin. Um, so that is the special group that we're gonna talk about tonight. Um, what is stage two and why is this important? Um, well, stage two melanoma patients are primarily defined by their Breslow depth and the presence or absence of ulceration. So by and large, stage two melanomas tend to be melanomas that are at least a millimeter, all the way up above four millimeters, um, and they can be ulcerated or non-ulcerated. Um, there's one actually special group that are still considered stage one, and those are melanomas that are between one and two um, millimeters but are non-ulcerated. Those fall into the 1B category, but everyone else greater than a millimeter um, falls into stage two. So it's primarily uh, has to do with the depth or how deep it goes into the skin. That's something that is on a pathology report called a Breslow depth, and it's an actual measurement of how far the melanoma goes into the skin. So um, it's measured by a pathologist. It's not something that you have to know really anything about. It'll be um, discussed right there on your path report. Um, stage two um, is very important because stage two melanoma patients kind of fall into this in-between category where their melanomas aren't quite bad enough to qualify for preventative or adjuvant therapy, um, but are a little more aggressive than the stage one group that have very low risks of recurrence. So stage two has become a very um, important group of patients, at least right now, because there are some things that are um, being tested in that group um, for preventative therapy to help prevent recurrences in this group of people. So um, we'll get to that later, but backing up, um, hi everyone, if you can hear me, hit the like button so that I know that you can hear. I see some of you are watching right now. Um, so how do we split up the stage two group? So the stage two group is split up into A, B, and C. Stage two A patients are greater than a millimeter um, and less than four millimeters. So they can be greater than a millimeter but less than two and ulcerated, or greater than two millimeters up to four millimeters and non-ulcerated. So that makes up 2A. 2B are people who have a Breslow depth between two and four millimeters that are ulcerated or greater than four millimeters that aren't ulcerated. And then the great, the stage three, uh, 2C group um, are tumors that have a Breslow depth greater than four millimeters and are ulcerated. So that represents you know, the worst um, stage in stage two. Um, how do they figure out prognosis? Because primarily prognosis is based on the Breslow depth and also the ulceration status. So the deeper that the tumor is, it tends to be a worse prognosis in terms of recurrence risk and overall survival. Um, patients that have ulceration contribute to that, but it also would result in a higher stage. So like stage 2A um, is the, uh, the lowest risk of recurrence, um, and stage 2C is actually the highest risk of recurrence. Those people have really deep tumors that also have ulceration. Does that make sense? So. Um, prognosis wise there's also other factors that kind of contribute into it that aren't really put in the statistics and those are age um, patients that are younger tend to do a little better um, females have a little higher um, overall survival than men um, if your melanoma originated in a mole that tends to have a better prognosis but really when you're looking at the overall survival um, benefit or um, survival rate and risk of recurrence it's primarily based upon Breslow depth and ulceration. Oh no! So as you can tell, I'm doing this in the bathroom. So um, outside of my uh, stepdaughter's <laughs> um, rehearsal. So anyway, so here is what we have going on. So stage 2A melanoma, their prognosis or risk of um, recurrence or five-year survival um, is like 94%. So they're the lowest, the lowest risk group in stage two. Um, at 10 years, that um, survival goes to 88%. So really very consistent, stage 2A tend to do really well. Um, the interesting thing, and the reason that stage two has become extremely important, is that stage 2B and stage 2C actually have a lower survival at five and 10 years than stage 3A. Um, so stage 3A tends to be a high risk group, but they also have treatment options. So 
the thing to remember is that stage 2B and C and stage 3A for the most part have the same or very similar Breslow depth. So they're equal in depth to the um, into the skin, but they don't have lymph nodes involved. So the stage 2 group, the really only difference between them and stage 3A are that they don't have lymph nodes. Um, and so in stage 2B patients, the risk of um, recurrence is, is intermediate, so it's sort of in the middle. But for 2C, it's quite high. So um, the survival at five years is 82% as compared to 93% in stage 3A patients. So even though the patient has a, a worse stage, they actually have a better survival. Um, and we think that that primarily may have to do with um, the fact that there isn't any preventative therapy for this stage 2B and 2C group um, at this time. So back in 1995, there used to be an adjuvant therapy, um, and they used it for a really long time until um, recently. There was a therapy that was available for a preventative therapy called um, interferon. And interferon is actually a um, protein that you have in your body. It causes flu-like symptoms, you have to get it every day for a month IV and then give yourself shots at home or alternatively give yourself shots weekly for a couple years. Um, and the, there was really no survival benefit overall. And so actually now oncologists really are primarily not recommending um, interferon except for to a very select group of patients. Um, it's really not available a lot of places. So. Um, the primary treatment for um, stage two is actually surgery. So um, that involves a wide excision um, and a sentinel node, which is checking the lymph nodes um, that drain the area where your melanoma originated from on the skin to see if lymph nodes are involved. Now remember, the Breslow depth is how deep into the skin the melanoma actually goes. So, um, the deeper that the melanoma goes into the skin, the more likely that the lymph nodes would be positive, but also that the deeper they go, the more access to blood vessels and lymph nodes that they have. So um, even though a sentinel node might be negative, that doesn't necessarily mean that one cell um, might not have escaped into the blood vessels or into the bloodstream and traveled distantly. And so that's why um, this stage 2B and 2C groups are very important. Um, in targeting for um, recurrence risk. So when you do surgery and have a wider excision, um, melanomas that are primarily between one and two millimeters get about a one centimeter excision around. Um, and anything greater than uh, two millimeters in Breslow depth typically gets a two centimeter margin in all directions. Um, originally, they had thought years and years ago that if your melanoma was like say three millimeters or four millimeters or 17 millimeters that you needed to have an even wider excision. Um, but there was a bunch of data that the surgery groups did that actually proved that um, past two centimeters, there was no actual increased benefit of doing a wider excision. So really, if you have a stage two melanoma, you need to have a one or two centimeter excision and a sentinel node assessment. And then for the most part, your treatment is done. So then you become somebody who comes back to your um, dermatologist or oncologist every three months um, or every six months for a skin exam. Um, some dermatologists and oncologists um, actually only see stage two patients once a year. Um, the data sort of is varied, um, but the recommendation is at least every six months to have a skin examination um, by an all, either a dermatologist or oncologist um, that specializes um, in skin cancers. Um, and then imaging is really variable as well. Like there are recommendations that say like once a year you should have a chest x-ray. Um, there are some uh, recommendations that people get staged at baseline where they have maybe CTs or a PET CT, but that is extremely variable across treating physicians. Um, and so there's not really a right or wrong way to do that. So, so I'm looking at the comments. It says we have a comment that says, why no referral to an oncologist, no CT or PET? Um, no treatment. So um, the reason for that is that this group of patients sort of fall into this intermediate risk group. So because you don't have lymph nodes that guarantee that you, you know, could have further involvement of um, distant spread and because the lymph nodes are negative, um, it actually has a risk that is somewhere between like 
20 and 30 percent um, of recurrence and even though that is high in the eyes of someone like myself who treats melanoma only every day um, in the overall schema where patients that are stage three have risks that are like above 50 percent um, that group is is at a higher risk essentially so um, honestly <laughs> In my opinion, I think that people who are stage two should at least see an oncologist once just to see their recommendation. However, that is not a practice across the board. Um, it's something that you as a patient can request. It is covered by insurance um, for you to see an oncologist, but maybe you don't live in an area where there is a melanoma specialist or you live too far away for that, or um, your oncologist is in your area and your insurance group doesn't see only melanoma. Um, really data that has been tested across the board and the data up to this point has really said that for people that have Breslau ducts that are even up to four millimeters that don't have lymph nodes involved, that the risk is that it's not high enough to require treatment necessarily. So, um, you know, regular skin checks are very important and 70% of melanomas actually recur where they started. So either in the skin or in the lymph node basin. So really skin exams are the most important part of this entire, and obviously lymph node checks are the most important part of this entire follow-up um, because that 30% really doesn't account for a lot of patients in the grand scheme of things. Like the recurrence risk um, is really like less than maybe seven or eight, five percent, that that actually will happen, that it'll be distant. So um, that's kind of why. I know that's kind of a convoluted answer to that question, but um, it's the best we have right now. Um, I see, Amanda, you said that you had stage 2B that was 4.5 millimeters, and now that you have metastases, and, and that's a, exactly why um, the focus is really on stage 2 to see if we can reduce that risk of recurrence. Um, <laughs> so, okay, so let's just really quickly talk about um, what treatment options are available other than observation. So again, we talked about in stage 2 and B, 2B and C that, that totally um, previous to this you could get interferon. Um, again, because it didn't offer any survival benefit and because of the toxicity profile, a lot of people don't recommend that at this point um, to do. It is still available. Um, I will tell you at our institution in Pittsburgh, we do still sometimes give interferon to patients that are stage 2B or C um, for lack of better options. Um, however, at our institution, we actually have clinical trials and that brings me to my next topic. So. Right now, because of the importance of this group and because of they're seeing the trends of, of B and C kind of um, increasing um, the recurrence and seeing less survivals, um, they actually are focusing on adjuvant therapy for this group. So one of the trials that is open now and accruing nationwide is the Keynote 716 trial. Um, and what it basically is is MK3475, which is Keytruda, um, versus placebo. So it is a randomized trial, which means that you may not get the active treatment group, but the standard of care really is placebo or observation. So um, the groups are divided into either Keytruda or placebo. You come in and you actually, it's blinded, so you don't know which one you're getting. Um, and it's for patients that are stage 2B and 2C. Um, they are randomized by the drug company, so even the treating oncologist doesn't know unless there's a reason to unblind someone. Um, and a reason like that would be if they had progression, or if like tumors came back, or if they had toxicities that required us to take them off treatment, um, we would obviously unblind them to know what they got so that we know how to appropriately fix them. Um, but this trial is something that is extremely important um, and it's something that even though there's a placebo arm, really you're having the opportunity to have access to a drug that may potentially um, decrease your risk of recurrence. And, and Keytruda is something that is actually used in both stage three melanoma and also stage four melanoma. So they're now trialing it in this other high risk, higher risk group or intermediate risk group. Um, there's an additional clinical trial that's actually, unfortunately right now, not accruing patients anywhere in the United States that I know of, 
um, using the other PD-1 inhibitor, which is Opdivo, and it's designed the same way, um, and it is for stage 2B and 2C patients. Hi, Debbie, how are you? Um, so, let me see, Tamara, what did you say? You said you have stage 3C and no known primary PET scans every six months. Yeah, so it's, it's one of those things that unfortunately, because this group really um, now is, see, we're seeing the data that's supporting the, that this two, stage 2B two and C group kind of have a little bit higher risks than we originally thought. Um, and because the shift of melanoma treatment, because we're seeing so many advances, we're now trying to target the groups that um, like prevention, and we're trying to target patients that have an intermediate risk. And you know, part of the clinical trial is that we don't know whether this will reduce the risk in these individuals, um, but that's kind of the point, is to see if we can further um, benefit the stage two deeper tumors um, to try to help them you know, reduce the risk. So yeah, interferon, Tamara, interferon's tough. It really does have a lot of side effects. It, you know, the immunotherapy does actually cause the same kind of, like it could have caused rheumatoid autoimmune disease. It, it can also um, create auto, other autoimmune disorders um, like psoriasis. Um, it can cause autoimmune colitis and dermatitis and other things. So it's not a completely, um, you know, toxicity free treatment, but it is something that for the most part patients do really well with. Um, and so it's, it's really helpful. So again, stage two, very important. We're really targeting the stage two population. Um, and actually our, um, our we have a, a peer connect group that is for everyone stage one, melanoma in situ, all the way up to stage four. We even are kind of having caregivers um, in the Peer Connect as well um, to really like have a buddy to talk to that is going through what you're going through. And, and we really could use some stage two patients. So um, there is a wonderful woman who is probably one of the most caring people I've ever met. Her name is Brenda. Um, and the information for the Peer Connect um, program is actually on our website. Um, you can search it in the bar. Um, but the Peer Connect group is really a lovely thing. Um, we actually have something like a mentorship program that we do at our institution kind of off the cuff where we ask people to kind of help other people um, when they're having a hard time. But this is a, you know, a very standard, there's a questionnaire and it's a very specific matching. Um, Brenda does a really nice job making sure that people get connected that need each other. Um, Brenda is also a very good um, asset um, because she's really great at sort of making everything better. You, you could call and talk to her about, you know, the emotional um, turmoils that you're going through and, and she will always find a way to help you um, as well. So I'm kind of the medical side, Brenda's kind of more of the emotional side um, and the psychosocial side um, and all together we're just here to help. So please, 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 um, if you're stage two, go for your skin exams, lymph node checks. Um, if you are recently diagnosed stage 2B or 2C, um, talk to your treating physician um, about maybe going to see an oncologist and, and talk about the potential for maybe getting involved in one of those clinical trials. Possibly, um, it may not be for you and that's okay. Um, but the standard of care is observation, just make sure that you get checked, okay? So um, I think that's it for now. Um, if you have any more questions, please, please, please put them in the comments. Um, I will definitely get to them. Um, I usually will go through them tomorrow and reply. Um, and you can always reach me on the Ask an Expert hotline, um, either by phone or by email, by filling out the form. Um, I tend to get back to people within like one to two days. Um, so I look forward to talking to you. Hi, everyone. Hi, Polly. Um, I will see everyone soon. Oh, one thing to note is that we're not doing a Facebook Live in December because the holidays are too crazy. But we'll be back in January and we're going to be talking about all things BRAF. So stay tuned. Talk to you soon. Bye.